When you get an Internet of Things project working, you get this lovely sensation of wow, software and hardware coming together to create an amazing device. But the journey can be long and difficult, with different tools to install and libraries to configure. But what if you could get there faster? On today's show, I'm joined by Vanessa, an IoT program manager from Microsoft, who decided enough was enough. She's reduced the journey to wow to less than five minutes for some of the most popular development kits for manufacturers of the hardware you find in today's production IoT deployments. Learn how to achieve IoT wow in less than five minutes, capturing data from the sensors on a developer kit like the STM Micro Disco, sending this data up to cloud and visualizing this data on dashboards. And the best part is you can achieve this five minutes to wow at home. Let's get personal computing with Vanessa Villa. Hey, Vanessa, welcome to Redmond Reactor. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me here, Jim. It's always awesome having you here. I know we've had a lot of fun in this space in the past. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. Now, you've got an IoT board here, and we all know that IoT is hard, yes. and it takes a long time to get your computer set up, get your board programmed, and get it to the cloud. Not to mention the learning curve on that. And the learning curve for that. It's a lot of work here, but you claim that you can get this connected to the cloud in five minutes? Yes. Maybe four minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, that is awesome, because that's about four hours less than it takes me. <laughs> I, mean, I, can't, I can't wait to see this. But I guess let's start with this board. What is, what is this board that you've got here? So this is the STM32U5 board. And it's one of the boards that ST uh, Microelectronic has developed as a development kit. Right. And what that means is that this board has a couple of sensors, definitely a lot of capacity to uh, do what you needed to do and prove out what you need to do for an IoT scenario. So it already has a temperature, a gyroscopic, an accelerometer, those kinds of sensors. But if you're looking for like a soil humidity or um, a more advanced scenario, you can definitely connect up those sensors to this board and it's more than capable of handling it. So this is, I've, I've seen these referred to as disco boards and uh, they don't seem to have enough LEDs for a disco board. <laughs> um, but I mean, this is, so this is, Essentially, we've got the chip on there. That's the kind of chip that you would then take and use that in like a, a commercial application. So if you're building real world hardware um, that you're shipping to uh, you know thousands, millions of people, yes. you would use the same chip, but you'd prototype on here, yes. and then you'd take that, that chip and the sensors that you want would go in the commercial one. Exactly. So this, is, this is your kind of prototyping kit, but fundamentally the code you write for this prototyping kit would, would be work. the exact same, yes. So your five, minutes, your five minute claim that you can get this going in five minutes where I would literally recreate, take that code and put that on a commercial board that I would ship to millions of customers. Exactly, that's the idea. Nice, nice. So how? How do you do it in five minutes? What's, what's the magic behind it? Show me, teach me. I want, I want to see this. Sure. So we actually worked with the board manufacturer themselves uh, in ST Micro's case to work with uh, their developers, their engineering team to create the most seamless process possible. Uh, so we developed an entire getting started guide. Uh, so if you would like, I can go ahead and walk you through that. Yes, please. Yeah, get, I want to. I want to see this. All right. Okay. We should um, probably start the clock, shouldn't we? We should probably start <laughs> the clock. <laughs> um, no. So for the uh, thing that we're going to connecting this board today, yeah. right? The only thing that we really need is um, Python, PySerial, their um, execution file, um, and then be able just be able to run that on a computer. Okay. Um, they do have flavors for Linux and uh, Mac OS as well. So it's not just a Windows thing. It's not just it's a Windows thing. And it's you say awesome. things like Python needs to be installed. I mean, that's yes. on Windows. You just type Python. If you don't have it installed, it takes you to the store. PySerial is just a pip install. Uh, Linux usually comes pre-installed. Python is not installed. Um, Mac OS, you can install it with Homebrew. So that's easy enough to do. Brilliant. And then you say you just have to put on um, uh, they have a downloaded um, kind of like project that you can start with. Um, so we can go ahead and open that up. So you literally just download this? Yes, from off their website um, or via that PDF that we were walking through. Okay. Um, and you'll see a bunch of files here. They're Azure CLI scripts, certs, perms. You know, it looks kind of scary. Um, but the only thing you really need to click, and that's going to walk you through the whole experience, is this STM32U5 Quick Connect Python script. 
So there's literally a Python script that you run. Yes. And that does all the things for you. Yes. It, it nice. provisions the board, it downloads the binaries, it handles everything that you need. Which is great, because normally in the past, you'd have to install like the STM cube yes. developer tools or embed OS developer tools or platform IO and Visual Studio Code. You have to create the project, you have to set up configuration, you have to configure the libraries, you have to then make sure you've got the right C compiler installed. Oh uh, and if you if you go going from two, one board to another, you're going to have to potentially uninstall and then reinstall things. And it's usually a lot of work. But it's you're saying I run this Python script, and magic. Magic. Okay, so let's let's see this Python script in action then. All right, let's go ahead and run it. All right, Python uh, STM32 Quick Connect Python. Right? Yep. Now it's going to ask us if we have an, a paid Azure subscription. This is connection to the cloud. This is connection to Azure, so we need to have that Azure account in place. Exactly. Um, so in this case, I'm going to pretend that I don't, because a lot of people starting off may not have an Azure subscription just yet. Right? Yeah. They, they're just they're proving out their concepts. They're still trying to make a decision of whether they want to commit to Azure or not. And yeah. so for this example, we're just going to say no. So I don't need an Azure. I can get connect to the cloud without an Azure subscription. Yes. And it already opened up uh, the Azure IoT Central uh, in the browser for us even. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, go back to our handy dandy uh, script here and go to our Quick Connect application template. And so um, as you can see, it's already opened up Azure IoT Central with the STM32 U5. And Azure um, IoT Central, that's the software as a service platform for IoT. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So this is one where it's not just like a data pipe. This no. has got a whole application which you can build out and have dashboards and charts and yes. that kind of stuff. Right. Dashboards. Yeah. Exports, it stores your data for seven to 30 days, depending on what trial you get. Um, you can manage your boards out of there. You can send out commands. You can do a whole kit and caboodle with Azure IT Central. Nice, nice. Again, it's that you want to get started. You don't want to have to build out your dashboards yourself. You don't have to build up data storage yourself. This is just there. Done. Just there. Nice. Done. All right. So we're going to come up with a cute name um, Reactor. Reactor. Why not? All right. Um, Maybe reactor, do we have a favorite number? 42. Uh, 42, yes, 42. All right, so we go ahead and click Create for that Azure IoT application. And that's going to go behind the scenes and just build us out a whole application. Exactly. It's going to go ahead and create that entire Azure IoT central application. OK. And this looks like it's got stuff in it already. Yes. So the stuff here is already actually created for our experience. Um, and it can be created for your experience as well. So um, it's so someone's already created these particular device templates. Exactly. So someone which has are the setups for that. That's the thing that says what the hardware does. Yes. And that's been created for for uh, the U5 board that we have today. There's the IoT no discovery board, which is another one that SC Micro has and a sensor tile as well. So all of these boards, uh, STR has done the work and provisioned them and told IoT Central and the cloud, essentially, what these boards do, what kind of sensors they are, and what kind of data uh, these boards are going to be sending to it. So you said this board's uh, development kit has got a like, temperature sensor, humidity sensor. Yes. IoT Central now no knows about that. Yes. Nice, nice. Let, let's get it connected. I, I want to see this. This All is really right. cool. So we can come in here, and we're actually just going to take the name of our app real quick, Yeah. copy that over. And go back to that script that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So it says, please enter app name. So we're going to copy and paste it in. Mm -hmm. Hit enter. It's updating our config. So it's a config file that's that was in that part, that thing you downloaded from yes. STM. Okay, it's config yes. file there. Yeah. Yes. We're going to sign in to our Microsoft Azure account. This is not an Azure subscription. This is just a Microsoft account. It says you have logged in. So that gives the the script uh, the appropriate token. Right. Okay. So this okay. So this is now. This is. So that's how it can launch. It knows which IoT Central application to talk to. It needs your permission. It, you, know, you can't have any application just talking to your IoT Central application. Exactly. It's got to be secure. Yes. yes. I know we joke that the S in IoT stands for security, but <laughs> we are secure here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. So it it is you know doing things very securely. So uh, you can take this entire process, this entire um, you know development process, and then create it. For yourself, for your own proof of concept, and make sure that it is secure. Nice, nice. Yeah, there's so many IT security horror stories. Yeah, you just Google exactly. with Bing for IT security issues, and it's just horrendous. Whether you're hacking fish tanks to get casino data, or you know, pulling data off baby monitors, this is secure. We've got that built in. 
yeah, the script itself can't even make any changes without your permission. Exactly. Nice, nice. So we're going to go ahead and copy the application ID as prompted and opened up by the script itself. It, uh, you know, it asked for an application ID. It opened up a browser page with the application ID. Because you've got, you could potentially have multiple applications, so you can't just, yeah, so it needs to know which application. It needs to know exactly which application. So we go ahead, copy that into the script. It's updating our config file again with all of that information. It's now finding the board. OK, so the COM port is basically the, the, the connection to the, to the board. Yes. And it's doing lots of things that looks like low level. Yes. So now it's copying over the project, the binaries. Um, it's even copying over um, an, an entire security setup um, over to the board to make sure that this entire project, this entire process is secure. So it's putting like certificates or something like that yes. on the board yes. that the IT central application knows about. Yep. So this board is then permissioned to talk to your IT central application. Yes. But no one else's. Exactly. Nice. And that's all. This is all managing that. And we've got this lovely green line. Downloading. Yep. Downloading. And so this is actually where the bulk of the time goes to, is this uh, script doing you know, its thing. It's uh, initializing binary files down to the board. It's um, you know, setting up the Wi-Fi credentials that we, uh, you, pre or you can set up uh, via the config file. So I put in uh, Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi password. Nice and secure. <laughs> I like it. So nice. you can figure that in there. So this can connect to uh, the Wi-Fi. Exactly. And that's kind of the only configure you had to do. The rest, it did it all for you. Yes, or it prompted me and opened up browser pages for myself. Yeah. Nice. And as you say, most of this, this five minutes is not five minutes of, of coding. It's maybe a minute of typing stuff in, and then three and a half minutes of going to go get coffee. You come back, but it's, like, yeah, it's done. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yep. And this is zipping through. It is zipping through it, which is great. <laughs> and I guess a lot of the the speed is going to be determined by the fact you're pushing stuff onto a board. Because this is this is not a powerful board, is it? No. Well, I mean, the powerful in the scope of boards, of low-level <laughs> <Yeah. level> boards. <laughs> but I mean, it's, I mean, sitting next to you, we've got like a 30-year-old PC that's got 16 megabytes of RAM. That's more than this board has got, isn't it? Uh, perhaps. We can actually look at the specs, if you'd like. Yeah, please. Well, I always love the fact that IoT boards, even the top of the range ones, are still less powerful than the computers I grew up with. Um, so what are we looking at here? We've got. 786 kilobytes of RAM and two megabytes of flash. Yep. As opposed to this old PC here with 16 megabytes of RAM and 120 megabytes of hard disk space. But this is probably, the chip in here is probably faster. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So the chip's a lot faster than that. It's a 25 megahertz processor. These are usually substantially faster than that. So less RAM, but more power and substantially smaller. Substantially smaller. Yeah. So a lot of the times we spent programming this because these don't run so quickly. Right. Yeah, the, these run, you know, they run, I would say, fairly quickly, uh, given, you know, all of their sensors and the capabilities that you have to push through them. Yeah. But um, more often than not, when you're programming these boards, you are programming um, at, at a lower level language and trying to export that experience out. Yeah. All right. So it looks like, uh oh. <laughs> so it said a hard reset was performed, which means it's reset everything. Mm -hmm. Wi Fi wi credentials. That Wi Fi might be off. <laughs> uh oh. So we're going to do some live debugging here. The wi -Fi, is the Wi-Fi off? Yep. Uh, so we just turned the Wi-Fi back on. Turn the Wi-Fi back on. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. My Wi-Fi has a hard reset, you know, a hard timer reset. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, rerun the script. Since we already uh, pretty much provisioned everything already, and uh, the config file already has all of that information. We can just carry away left foot. So it's just ask carry... you want to continue with the same application. You just yeah. run that. Right. So it's a nice thing about the script is it's rerunnable. So exactly. if you have an issue like your Wi-Fi is off or you know, something happens, yes. you just rerun it. And I guess where it's also build things. Yep. Oh, it wants to reauth again. Nice and secure. Very secure. Very secure. And guess where everything's been built as well. So it's probably not going to be rebuilding. No, it shouldn't be rebuilding. Yep. We went directly to the COM port. It didn't prompt us again for the app ID or anything like that. So nice. it's going to, uh, it, because it's already built and it's kind of stored already in my machine's you know, RAM, it's going to be very, very quick about uh, yeah. reprovisioning this board and be like, OK, well, we already have this there. You know, Option bytes are successfully programmed. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So yeah. So now it's in the download, which is the slow part because we're pushing it onto the flash memory. Exactly. Uh, with a lovely blinking LED there. Lovely. You know, it's, it's very it's, nice. It's, it really gives you the sense that it's doing something. 
that is the thing about IT. <laughs> we, we knew these NEDs. So all, any IT enthusiast, we're all about the NEDs, aren't we? Exactly. We need those flash NEDs. Without that, we don't know if it's doing anything. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so that was something that we actually worked with the, you know, when we were building the script and this experience, we wanted the flashing LEDs to signify something. Yeah. So different LED slashing will mean different things and will tell you, you know, what, what's going on. So, uh, you know, the red and green uh, flashing alternately means that it is, you know, downloading, is compiling, is, you know, doing something as opposed to, you know, oh, you know, there's no lights on or, yes. oh, what are we there's doing? something happening with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I must be, I, I always find that whenever, as you know, I'm a bit of an IT nerd. Yes. And whenever I'm building something, I always try and have the LED doing something in time with what it is that the code is doing because that's my visual feedback. I, we, we like that. We like flashing lights. I'm a, yeah. Yeah. It gives you that, that feeling of, you know, Oh, like the excitement. It gives you the mm. joy. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's great. It's like, it's, it's like I mean, red and green, it's, it's, it's basically, like, it's, it's like Christmas, isn't it? Like, it's it, like that, it's great. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, so we're, we're done. We're done. So That's now, it. yes. So the script now is running on the board and it's sending uh, data and p data payloads over to IoT Central. So if we. So this is now connected. You literally, that script, it compiled the code, yes. put all the connection details, all the configuration, Wi Fi credentials, pushes the board, board's now connected. We have data from the cloud. Exactly. I want to see this data from the cloud. Go show me, show me, show me. All right, let's head over to IoT Central and look at our device's dashboard. Nice. So as you can see, uh, this device is sending real data over to IoT Central. And we already have a pre-configured dashboard to view all of that data. So, so that's kind of part of the, the setup script. It pre-configure the dashboards with all the data based off the sensors that are on on this board? Uh, actually, this was uh, fully done for this board specifically by the board's manufacturer. They wanted to make sure that um, anywhere that you use this board within IoT Central, you would have these customized dashboards for the board with all of the sensors already you know, already up. So it's not just like a just generic dashboard. It's one specifically from ST yes. Micro. Nice. Yes. Nice. This, is, this gets cooler by the minute. <laughs> So you can see uh, the temperature, the relative humidity, pressure already up on this pre-configured dashboard. And we've got a chart there for it. We've got the actual numbers. Yes, we have actual numbers. Um, if you go over to the about side, you can even see like the appropriate device model, the operating system that's running on the board. Um, and if you really, really wanted to see what the raw data payloads are, you could also see that based off the th this dashboard. To actually see whatever pack of data has been come from the device, I can see that. Yes. So if I wanted to then build out something else later on or build up my own dashboards, make my changes, I can see what the data is. Yes. So I could still use this setup with this board uh, to develop my own applications by changing the back end because I can see the data from here if I, want, if I wanted to do that. Yes. Nice. And if you nice. wanted to add additional sensors, if you wanted to tweak the names of any of the temperatures, you know, I don't like temperature, I prefer Kelvin, or I prefer, prefer Celsius or something like that, um, you can just version this exact device model within IoT Central, make those configuration and those changes, republish it, and it everything should pretty much work already. Nice. And then the packer, the, the thing you downloaded at the start, which had all this, that's got the source code in it. Yes, it so does. So if I need to get on the board, and then you're saying that about adding your sensor, I can just go into that source code. And get, edit that source code. Yep. And then just run the script run the script again. Yes, sir. So I don't even need to think about a compiler. I just literally change the source code, rerun that exact same script. And it should work. This is brilliant. This I, I know I know you talk about this like five minutes to wow, but this yeah. is this is a wow moment. When I first started with IoT, this is hours and hours and hours and just constant pain. And the fact you can get this done in just five minutes. And so you make the changes. I just run the script. It works. This is brilliant. This is so cool. Thank you so much for taking to come, to come and share this with me. I am very excited. I can't wait to get playing this myself. I'm so thankful you know, for you asking me to be here. This has been lovely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.